Mark Ilkin Hidden Knowledge, Unraveling the Pole Shift. The 4th of March 2019 at 12 o'clock. Pole Shift Past, Present, Future. Must be read. Pole Shift This will be a hell of a long read but it's so important to all. Where is the system? How far away is it? What happens before, during and after the pole shift? What evidence do we have through ancient history? What does Project Blue Beam have to do with it? Questions answered. Okay. Dot the first set of images is a realistic model of where the system is, so you get a perspective of just how big space is and how far away the planets are. In previous posts, I'd enlarge the planets so you get a better understanding of what you're looking at so this now will help those understanding the physics. View from above ecliptic. Remember this, the system is out past Mars orbital path and Mars is 34 million miles away, when closest to Mars on our aphelion and Mars is perihelion, so realistically the approaching system, brown dwarf and companions, is still about 75 minus 80 million miles away. So even though it looks close in this first image, realistically, it's very far away but in astronomical terms it's close. If it was closer, we'd be seeing so much more incredible geological changes here on Earth. Our sun is 93 million miles away and creates all the weather anomalies we see here on Earth so keep that distance in mind and how much it affects Earth. A brown dwarf is another star, which is very dense, with strong magnetic properties, so distance away from Earth is vital. 75 minus 80 million miles away isn't that hard to fathom when you consider the astrophysics. Then think about how much our Earth is changing geologically, especially in the past five years that will give you an indication of how strong another magnetic influence in the solar system is. The red orb represents the brown dwarf, roughly. I've zoomed in a bit in each image right up to our moon's orbit so you can still get a perspective of how far away it still is. Very slow moving system. Looking from below ecliptic. Last image that's zoomed all the way to our moon's orbit. As you can see, the perspective of Saturn, Pluto remains the same because of distance away from Earth. Same applies to the brown dwarf. People wonder why we don't see it constantly, this is why. Space is so massive and the perspective can throw people off. Dot the electromagnetic portal connections that connect all planets to our sun and to each planet is where the charged particle, solar system harmonics play a huge role in the geological changes of, not just Earth, but all planets. Closer the system gets, gradually, the more changes we see. It's taken 20 to 30 years to get to where it is now after coming through the Kuiper belt. Hence fireball data increase over the past 17 years. Also why the geological change extreme has gradually increased over the last 30 years. Magnetic repulsion is playing a big part. A brown dwarf in between Jupiter and Saturn means the magnetic field of Jupiter and Saturn is causing the brown dwarf to slow up slightly and is absorbing lots of the energy from the brown dwarf, thankfully for Earth. It's still rising from the ecliptic but slowly to approach its perihelion, it's actually in its perihelion stage now, slowly rising every year and drawing closer. The orbit is around 3657 years, so you can imagine how slow it moves through space, even though it speeds up dramatically on its perihelion, closest approach to the Sun, it's still relatively slow in comparison to the likes of Saturn, Jupiter orbit around the Sun. Further out a planet is from the Sun, the slower the orbit around the Sun. However, a star orbiting a star, binary twin, causes so much magnetic repulsion that the orbit slows significantly. It's like two magnets battling and drawing energy from each star. Hence the grand solar minimum agenda. The main reason we was seeing solar wind speeds reach nearly 1900 kms in the magnetopause data in December, January was because we was in our backside alignment. Brown dwarf. Sun. Earth. This means the sun's solar wind was directed at Earth and then being magnified from below the ecliptic from the second solar wind of the brown dwarf, opposite side of the sun, below the sun, just before it was hitting our magnetosphere. This is why our sun's solar wind telemetry was only reading 400 to 500 kms and our solar wind impact on the magnetosphere was being read at 1200 to 1900 kms. Kms equals kilometers traveled per second. Extra charged particles from a second source of wind. That's also the reason the earthquake magnitude and frequency was higher in those months, as well as volcanic activity. The more charged particles we see, the more core plasma reactions we see, leading to seismic, volcanic activity. From May to September we will see much more backward eddy formations because the solar wind will be coming from behind Earth. Also, a significant increase in seismic, volcanic activity due to entering the part of space where there is a much more vast amount of comic waves of energy. Whereas December, January we saw it hitting the southern magnetopause which was pushing our southern polar magnetic field lines north. 
people will always ask questions like, how can we keep passing it? Surely it would have gone by now so no harm done. This is where it's important to understand astrophysics, solar system dynamics, electromagnetism, solar system mechanics and solar system harmonics. Earth is the third closest planet to our Sun. This means we pass Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto every year. In fact, Earth orbits the Sun 248 times before Pluto has even done one orbit of the Sun, that's 248 Earth years so we pass Pluto 248 times on our orbit. It takes Neptune 165 years to orbit the Sun once so we pass Neptune every year. Uranus takes 84 years before it's done one orbit around the Sun. So we pass Uranus every year. Saturn takes 29 years. Jupiter takes 12 years. Mars takes 1.88 years. Earth takes 1 year. Venus takes 227 days. Mercury takes 88 days closest to the Sun. For example, Pluto is the furthest away from the Sun so it takes the longest to orbit the Sun and then the closer the planets are to the Sun, the faster the orbit becomes. But these are practically all the planets you're taught about in school. What they don't teach you is that there is many other planetary bodies that orbit our Sun. Electromagnetic connections can stay connected to planets, stars endlessly. Some planetary bodies takes thousands of years to orbit the Sun due to them being much further out. They have comet-like orbits, elongated oval orbits. When they come back in for their perihelion, the charged particle increase within the inner solar system is risen to incredible densities. This is the cosmic waves of energy and the reason for the cosmic rays, cosmic radiation increase. The brown dwarf, and seven orbiting planets, is approaching from under the ecliptic and because of the slow, elongated orbit, we easily pass it every year due to the distance away from Earth but each year it edges that tiny bit closer which means the magnetic influence increases, the cosmic radiation increases and the fireball data increases, due to the debris it went through when passing through the Kuiper belt. Every year, as always the more magnetic influence we see, the more cosmic radiation we see the more our magnetosphere depletes, the more our core reacts leading to the increase in geological, meteorological changes. Every year, on our front side alignment, June time this year, we pass the system. This causes our magnetic south pole to be disrupted due to the system's magnetic strength from under he ecliptic, below Earth. It always depends on where the outermost orbiting planet a brown dwarf is on its orbit. If it's orbiting Earth side of the brown dwarf then the magnetic influence is greater on our southern magnetic pole. If it is orbiting the opposite side of the brown dwarf then the magnetic influence is slightly weaker. However, just passing the brown dwarf, even at a great distance, is a strong magnetic influence. Axis tilt wobble data is a god tool for recognizing where the planets are on their orbits and where the system is located. Illustration front side alignment side view. Remember Illustration front side alignment side view. Remember the brown dwarf is bigger than Jupiter and Jupiter is 318 times the mass of Earth. So you can imagine the magnetic strength. Considering Jupiter's magnetic field is gigantic. 20 times the strength of Earth's magnetic field. How far away does the incoming system have to be to cause the sudden pole shift? You have to consider all the changes we are seeing now. The magnetosphere depletion, the stratospheric cosmic radiation increase, the risen sea temperatures, the sea ice extent reduction, the fireball data increase, the extreme weather anomalies increase, the fish die-offs, the dolphins, whales beaching, land animal die-offs, ionospheric charging increase, the seismic increase, the volcanic increase, the coastline floods increase, the oceanic surface temperature increase, the coral reef die-offs, the sinkhole increase, the landslide increase, the tidal retreat increase, the tidal surge increase, the birds falling from the sky increase, the atmospheric methane increase, the UVC being red at ground level, the ozone depletion. All that is happening now and increasing yearly with the last five years being the most dramatic increase. Most of all the magnetic pole migration speeding up. We know fully that the magnetic poles are on the move now and this is when the brown dwarf, and companions, are just outside Mars's orbital path but getting forever closer to Earth's orbital path due to the perihelion speed up. We have only 4 to 5, 5 at the very best, years till our magnetic north reaches the 40 degree point where the magnetic field is weaker, so the pole shifts a lot faster from that point, the closer the brown dwarf gets, the quicker the pole migration becomes. It's important to note it's not the brown dwarf that causes the sudden pole shift, approximately one hour, it's the outermost orbiting planet of the brown dwarf that causes the sudden pole shift. The brown dwarf is the culprit for all the geological change increase of Earth over the past 20 to 30 years as it drew closer. 
The crossing is that the outermost orbiting planet, Nibiru planet X, which comes up from directly under the southern hemisphere where our south magnetic pole then tries to repel it away, magnetic repulsion, Earth's only natural defense mechanism, and as the planet rises, our south pole follows, causing the fast magnetic reversal. Also important our magnetic field is created from Earth's core. Any magnetic disruption causes core flow changes and plasma reactions to occur. In the event of a magnetic reversal, the plates, soon after shift which is why the magnetic reversal leads to the geological shift. Extreme plate movements, seismic and volcanic extremities. So the brown dwarf could still be 25 million miles away from Earth when this occurs but Nibiru, planet X will pass between the distance of Earth and the Moon as it orbits the brown dwarf, Nemesis. Will we see the planet crossing? Yes. And it will cover most of the sky from your perspective but you'll get little warning from your government. Less time equals less panic. Can we see the brown dwarf? Rarely. Not only is the brown dwarf only visible in the infrared spectrum, it's also well hidden by NASA, Sun Simulation Unit being one. Many reasons many question whether the Sun Simulation Unit is viable to the basic understanding of physics and perspective view. My answer is always the same. You can cover the sun with your thumb at arm's length which will block the light from the sun tracing your eye. The same concept applies to a sun simulation unit being in low orbit, it doesn't have to be as big as people think. Although the sun simulation unit is 220 to 280 miles up, it still wouldn't have to be huge to block out the sun. Imagine astronauts, being up there on the space station, they could still block the sun out with their thumb at arm's length because the sun is still so far away, the perspective view wouldn't change or even be noticeable at that altitude due to sun still being 93 million miles away. So taking that into account, the space station being in low orbit, about 220 minus 230 miles, and how they could still block out the sun with their thumb at arm's length, it wouldn't take a gigantic piece of apparatus to mimic the sun. In fact, wouldn't it be fascinating if the sun simulation unit could be attached and detached from the space station? That's what occurs, unknown to the people on Earth that monitor the space station's navigation. They only use the Sun simulation unit when a stellar core or a planetary eclipse, that shouldn't have been a planetary eclipse, occurs and these orbital tracks are mathematically tracked so the unit can be used when necessary. Also the public doesn't freak out and so astronomers don't see what they aren't meant to. Also, people ask how they could mimic the sun's heat signature same concept applies to you being on a beach with a magnifying glass focusing the heat signatures on a piece of wood to create a fire. They can do this with the special lensing system to magnify the sun's rays, NASA star. The only time we get a chance to see the brown dwarf is when a solar flare occurs in the direction of the brown dwarf which covers the atmosphere with charged particles which makes it temporarily visible on the satellite data. But NASA quickly delete these images from the SOHO, LOSCO, SETCHI data files and even take the satellites offline whilst they smudge the data. Throw in chemtrails too. Used for many reasons but the main two are. Restrict the view and slow down the magnetosphere depletion. Barium particulates are used to reflect the gamma radiation, heat signatures back up into the atmosphere and aluminium is used to ease the electromagnetic properties of the increasing charged particles, cosmic radiation. They are trying to slow the effects to give them more time, not us. They are using all sorts of fungus, chemicals, metal particulates, acids, bacteria to alter our DNA and keep the public dumbed down so they are easier to control. Very clever. Evil, but clever. That's why the Illuminati run this planet and why they created the World Wide Web, CERN, Nazi etc. To gather information on you and manipulate your mind through false science, media outlets keep the public busy with drama, keep them guessing, keep them dumbed down whilst they continue their plans for the coming pole shift. Takes time to understand it all but I'm here to help. Everything that happens on this planet is because of the shift. Political agendas, military movements, false flag events, geological impacts, climate change agenda etc. you name it. All to gain more control of the masses before the shift occurs. What happens leading up to the shift? War, plate shifting, seismic increase, false flags, militarization of the streets. False flags are the elite's way of taking the people guns and making the streets more militarized to form more control. They stage shootings so that the public see the drama on the news outlets, that the elite own, which make most of the public naturally adopt this, we need to get rid of the guns attitude. This plays directly into the elite's hands. The more staged shootings, the more guns they can take away whilst putting more police, that are kitted out with military-style equipment, on the streets. This means there are less people with guns to deal with during martial law events. It's quite clear the world is preparing for the next big world war. 
saber rattling on the elite owned media outlets is saturated. This is their way of preparing the minds of the masses to subliminally accept the war as it occurs, so you can be easily controlled by FEMA, UN, police, military. This will be the war of distraction. The start of the global martial law enforcement to keep the public in their towns, cities ready for the shift. Why? Some of you will already know the elite want to depopulate the world to a much more manageable 500 million people. As written, in stone, on the New World Order, Georgia Guidestones. Agenda 21. The pole shift causes worldwide tidal surges to occur which will reach elevations of 400 to 1,500 feet in places. This will devastate the coastlines and all coastal areas. 90% of the world population live near coastal areas that would be affected and the elite want to depopulate the population. The pole shift is the perfect solution to their agenda and they know this. This is why war will give them the perfect reason to begin to implement martial law, to set up barricades around the towns, cities to keep most of the population by the coastal areas. Unfortunately, the standard military will be following orders of their ranking officers being none the wiser that they will be expendable during these events. The elite already have a very well established, above top secret, black op, military in place for the aftermath. The elite have been busy looking out for themselves, unknown to the majority of the public, they have been building underground sites called DUMB cities, deep underground military bases, so that the selected have a safe haven during these events with airlocked, watertight facilities, packed with over 10 years worth of food, water, power, seed vaults and cater for thousands of people in many different locations across the globe. But only for the rich, powerful, famous, elite. Why won't they go public with this information? You have to imagine the civil unrest that would occur if they made a public announcement that the world is going to change dramatically whilst most of the world's population will perish. The world would be in absolute chaos overnight. There would be religious hysteria, rioting, looting, killing over food, water, murders, rape, mass suicides. Dot the whole system would come crashing down in hours. Ambulance services would be overrun, police would be overrun and most of the servicemen would be going home to try to protect their families. So if a public announcement was to take place, the elite would be giving themselves a death sentence. They would have nearly 8 billion people in a state of chaos, looking to the government for answers. Also, the truther movement know how many dumb cities they have and where most of them are located which means the elite would be risking their safe havens. The public would be outraged that they have only tried to save themselves and not us. Millions would be banging on the doors of the underground bases. They can't have that. This is why they have been gradually, over the years, been gaining more control of the masses and building the FEMA camps in preparation. They have millions of plastic coffins located on thousands of private farms around the world ready. Millions of martial law signs have already been shipped to many countries in preparation of the events that will unfold. This is why they have military practice drills of blackout events for when the power goes from the EMPs that occur before the shift due to interplanetary plasma reactions as the system gets closer to the proximity of our Sun, Earth. This is why they have been testing the emergency broadcast systems on the television or through text messages on the alert systems. See how it all connects. Those that survive will be forced into the pre-built FEMA camps or detainment centers, implanted with the RFID chip to keep track of you and become a slave worker, to build their small cities after the shift but disguised as being helped through a catastrophic event. Don't follow FEMA, UN etc. for that is all part of their master plan. If that wasn't enough, there are many more events that take place before, during the shift. As the system draws closer, the interplanetary charged particle exchange becomes stronger. This means our core will be having more plasma reactions as the charged particles interact with Earth's magnetic field. Atmospheric compressions, cosmic ray increase. This leads to excessive magma increase, pressure under our plates, our oceans to warm, ice caps to melt. Dot all geological changes increase dramatically just before the shift. Plate boundary movements are the first to move. Cascadia subduction zone, San Andreas, New Madrid, Atlantic Ridge, Middle America Trench, Chile Trench, Virgin Island Transform Fault, Japan Trench, Aleutian Trench, New Zealand Fault, Java Trench. They will all move, all at different times. They are all seeing an increase in seismic activity already but when we see multiple 7 plus in those areas in the space of a few hours that's when you know plate adjustments are about to occur. Yellowstone will pop too. However, due to the polar and subtropical jet streams in the tropopause heavily intermixing, due to the Earth axis wobble increasing, magnetic influence, the ash will spread much faster than the scientific data shows the world. If our jet streams were in a normal state, 
the ash would take a long time to dissipate. But the jet streams are in a state of chaos, which means the ash will move much quicker and dissipate faster than predicted. It will still be catastrophic to all those in close vicinity to the caldera. Most of North, Middle America. Main events to watch for are as follows. Multiple 6 plus magnitude earthquakes in the space of a few hours on the Atlantic Ridge. This will be the indication of the Atlantic Ridge preparing to separate. The Eurasian plate will subside 150 feet causing the UK, Europe, east coast of America tsunami. If Japan splits and one half subsides. If Australia's west coast subsides. New Madrid adjustment. Cascadia subduction zone adjustment. San Andreas fault adjustment. Yellowstone eruption. If nuclear war breaks out or war is announced. If the internet shuts down. If the power in general shuts down. If the sun rises in the west this is due to magnetic repulsion which will temporarily alter Earth's rotation just before the shift. If any of the above starts to happen, you have two weeks to get the hell out of the cities and get to safe locations. If you get stuck in a town or city it will be very hard to survive. It will be every man for himself. There are horrible people in the world now so you can imagine how it will be when the streets are lawless. Important note any of that seismic active occurring leads to a no on effect of the other seismic events in that list. Weeks apart. Things might take a couple of months to take effect properly but you need to stay in the safe location from that two-week warning because things will escalate dramatically. What is Project Blue Beam, and how does it fit into the pole shift timeline? Project Blue Beam is a highly sophisticated, holographic laser system. As always, it categorically relates to the pole shift. Just have to connect the dots. Serge Monast has great knowledge on Project Bluebeam and gives good explanations too so search him out if you get a chance. The infamous, lying, questionable, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, is just one of many organizations behind Project Bluebeam, it is noteworthy that all are part of the same outfit Illuminati. To help understand why, Project Bluebeam, will be used and how, we'll go through steps so that the reader can get a better understanding of how it all ties into the pole shift. First step. It is important to understand that the one world religion, or new age religion, is the very foundation for the one world government in the new world order. Without this elusive religion the dictatorship of the new world order is completely impossible. They have kept blue beam very well hidden to the masses but more people are clocking on. The first step in the NASA blue beam project concerns the breakdown, re-evaluation of all archaeological knowledge. It deals with the setup, with artificially created earthquakes, harp, nexrad, scalar waves etc., at certain precise locations on the planet, of supposedly new discoveries which will finally explain to all people the error of all fundamental religious doctrines. The falsification of this information will be used to make all nations believe that their religious doctrines have been misunderstood for centuries and misinterpreted. Psychological preparations for that first step have already been implemented with the films like, 2001. A Space Odyssey the Star Trek series, Independence Day, which deals with invasions from space, Arrival, which again deals with alien contact here on Earth. What you will also see in these films is a lot of what I talk about, martial law, rioting, violence on the streets, roads, blockades, etc. and then the coming together of all nations to repel the invaders this is part of the whole deception. Hoaxed, discoveries what is important to understand in the first step is that those earthquakes will hit at different parts of the world where scientific and archaeological teachings have indicated that arcane mysteries have been buried. By those types of earthquakes, it will be possible for scientists to rediscover those arcane mysteries which will be used to discredit all fundamental religious doctrines. This is the first preparation for the plan for humanity because what they want to do is destroy the beliefs of all religions on the planet. To do that, they need some false proof from the far past that will prove to all nations that their religions have all been misinterpreted and misunderstood. Obviously, not all is fake. Lots of historic archaeological finds are legit and most of them all correlate with religion through different eras but the ones that specifically match their agendas will be used and are false findings. Again very clever. The second step. NASA's Illuminati Blue Beam project involves a gigantic space show with three-dimensional optical holograms and sounds laser projection of multiple holographic images to different parts of the world, each receiving a different image according to predominating regional national religious faith. This new God's voice will be speaking in all languages. In order to understand that, we must study various secret services research done in the last 25 years. The Soviets have perfected an advanced computer, even exported them, 
and fed them with the minute physio-psychological particulars based on their studies of the anatomy and electromechanical composition of the human body, and the studies of the electrical, chemical and biological properties of the human brain. These computers were fed, as well, with the languages of all human cultures and their meanings. The dialects of all cultures have been programmed into these computers from satellite transmissions. The Soviets began to feed the computers with objective programs like the ones of the new, Messiah. It also seems that the Soviets, the New World Order people, have resorted to suicidal methods with the human society by allocating electronic wavelengths for every person in every society and culture to induce suicidal thoughts if the person doesn't comply with the dictates of the New World Order. There are two different aspects of step two. The first is the space show. Where does the space show come from? The space show, the holographic images will be used in a simulation of the ending during which all nations will be shown scenes that will be the fulfillment of that which they desire to verify the prophecies and adversary events. These will be projected from satellites onto the sodium layer about 60 miles above the Earth. We see tests every once in a while, but they are called UFOs and flying saucers sightings. The result of these deliberately staged events will be to show the world the new Christ, the new Messiah, Maitreya, Maitreya, for the immediate implementation of the new one world religion. Enough truth will be foisted upon an unsuspecting world to hook them into the lie. Even the most learned will be deceived. The project has perfected the ability for some device, referred to as tractor beams, by ufologists, to lift up an enormous number of people, as in a rapture, and whisk the entire group into a never never land. We see tests of this device in the abduction of humans by those mysterious little alien greys who snatch people out of their beds and through windows into waiting motherships. Spoke about that in my CERN post link below. The calculated resistance to the universal religion in the new Messiah and the ensuing holy wars will result in the loss of human life on a scale never imagined before in all of human history. The Blue Beam Project will pretend to be the universal fulfillment of the prophecies of old, as major an event as that which occurred 2000 years ago. In principle, it will make use of the skies as a movie screen, on the sodium layer at about 60 miles, as space-based laser-generating satellites project simultaneous images to the entire circumference of the planet in every language and dialect according to the region. It deals with the religious aspect of the New World Order and is deception and seduction on a massive scale. Computers will coordinate the satellites and software already in place will run the sky show. Holographic images are based on nearly identical signals combining to produce an image or hologram with deep perspective which is equally applicable to acoustic ELF, VLF and LF waves and optical phenomena. Specifically, the show will consist of multiple holographic images to different parts of the world, each receiving a different image according to the specific national, regional religion. Not a single area will be excluded. With computer animation and sounds appearing to emanate from the very depths of space, astonished ardent followers of the various creeds will witness their own returned messiahs in convincing lifelike reality. Then the projections of Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, etc., will merge into one after correct explanations of the mysteries and revelations will have been disclosed. This one, God, will, in fact, be the Antichrist, who will explain that the various scriptures have been misunderstood and misinterpreted, and that the religions of old are responsible for turning brother against brother, and nation against nation, therefore old religions must be abolished to make way for the new age, one world religion, representing the one God Antichrist they see before them. Naturally, this superbly staged falsification will result in dissolved social and religious disorder on a grand scale, each nation blaming the other for the deception, setting loose millions of programmed religious fanatics through demonic possession on a scale never witnessed before. In addition, this event will occur at a time of profound worldwide political anarchy and general tumult created by some worldwide catastrophe war, pole shift. The United Nations even now plans to use Beethoven's Song of Joy as the anthem for the introduction for the New Age, One World Religion. If we put this space show in parallel with the Star Wars program we get this combination of electromagnetic radiation and hypnosis which have also been the subject of intensive research. In 1974, for instance, researcher G. F. Shapitz, said of one of the research proposals that, in this investigation it will be shown that the spoken words of the hypnotist may also be converted by electromagnetic energy directly into the subconscious part of the human brain without employing any mechanical device for receiving or transporting the message, and without the person exposed to such influence having a chance to control the information input consciously. It may be expected that the rationalized behavior will be considered to have been taken out of their own free will. Anyone investigating, 
practicing, channeling phenomena right now would be wise to take this area of research into consideration. It will be noted that those who think of themselves as channelers has escalated rapidly since this type of research was conducted. It is uncanny how similar their messages are, despite which entity they claim to be their source of divine guidance. It would suggest any individual considering the credibility of channeled information should be discerning and critically evaluate where the message they are receiving originates, and if the messages are specifically beneficial to the new world order. This doesn't mean you're not connect to the universe, I just mean be careful. The Sydney Morning Newspaper published an item on March 21, 1983 which announced that the Soviets were invading the human mind, the article having been submitted to the foreign editor by Dr. Nathan Abningi, assistant professor in the Faculty of Agriculture in Asia. It is worth quoting the article at length even though his grammar is a little old. This article relates to the Soviets who created the supercomputer we were discussing earlier and which is really important because these types of computers can be run through satellites and through space. The computers were fed with all the different languages and their meanings, the dialect of all peoples were fed to the computers with objective programs. But we are no longer talking about the Soviets. We are talking about the United Nations, the minions of the New World Order, who are feeding the computers with the necessary information. The editor of the column in which the article appeared even states that the piece made points too important to ignore. I think it is possible that the persons who have created this mega mind control program could sell the software to an organization and not be aware that the client might use the program and data to enslave all of humankind. Just imagine how far they have advanced since that article was published. Artificial thought and communication The advancement of techniques propel us toward the third step in the Blue Beam project that goes along with the telepathic and electronically augmented two-way communication where ELF, VLF and LF waves will reach each person from within his or her own mind, convincing each of them that their own God is speaking to them from the very depths of their own soul. Such rays from satellites are fed from the memories of computers that have stored massive data about every human on Earth, and their languages. The rays will then interlace with their natural thinking to form what we call diffuse artificial thought. That kind of technology goes into the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s research where the human brain has been compared to a computer. Information is fed in, processed, integrated and then a response is formulated and acted upon. Mind controllers manipulate information the same way a computer for grammar manipulates information. In January 1991, the University of Arizona hosted a conference entitled The NATO Advanced Research Workshop on Current and Emergent Phenomena and Biomolecular Systems. What does that mean exactly? It means this. We refer to one paper that was delivered at the conference which stands out for its different attitude towards the development under discussion at that time. It was, in effect, a protest and chilling warning to the attending scientists about the potential abuse of their research findings. Their findings, of course, stated that the United States has already Their findings, of course, stated that the United States has already developed communications equipment which can make the blind. Their findings, of course, stated that the United States has already developed communications equipment which can make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. It can relieve the terminally ill from pain without the use of drugs or surgery. I'm not talking about science fiction. A man might retain the use of all his faculties right up to the moment of his death. This communications equipment depends upon a completely new way of looking at the human brain and neuromuscular systems and radiation pulses at ultra-low frequencies. Some of this equipment is now operational within the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, and Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. It It will never be used to make the blind see the deaf hear and the lame walk because it is central to the domestic political agenda and foreign policy of George Bush, Obama, Trump and their puppet masters of the New World Order. Domestically, the new communications equipment is being used to torture and murder persons who match profiles imagined to be able to screen a given population for terrorists, to torture and murder citizens who belong to organizations which promote tolerance and peace and development in Central America, to torture and murder citizens who belong to organizations who oppose the development and deployment of nuclear weapons, and to create a race of slave cult automatons, or what is popularly called, the Manchurian candidates. Overseas experimentation is taking place on hostages held by the United States and Canada, Great Britain, Australia, Germany, Finland and France. Additionally, there has been a long series of bizarre suicides among British computer scientists, 
all of whom have had some connection to the United States Navy. What is possible to ask before such a psychology of terror as this? Would any government, corporation or psychiatrist willfully promote such horror today? The answer is quite obviously, yes. Government agencies and the corporations that work with them toward a new world order are prepared to promote anything that will help them achieve their objective of total social control. As for the question of why, for one thing, if you terrify the public and make them fear for their safety, they will allow you to implement draconian law enforcement practice, disarm them and keep extensive records on them, and they only have to tell you that it is all to protect you, of course. Secondly, it promotes the decay of the present democratic forms of political systems, and leads societies to search for alternative methods of political ideology. Of course, the alternative has already been planned. It is called the New World Order and it will not have your safety or interests at heart. As George Bush said, read my lips, fear has always been used by powerful elite to control and subjugate the masses. The old maxim, divide and conquer, is being played out to the limit worldwide to ensure that everyone is frightened for their personal safety and to be suspicious of everyone else. This, too, is mind control. To go further in regard to the new technology which is at the base of the NASA Blue Beam project, we have to consider this statement by psychologist James V. McConnell which was published in a 1970s issue of Psychology Today. McConnell which was published in a 1970s issue of Psychology Today. He said, The day has come when we can combine sensory deprivation with drug hypnosis and astute manipulation of reward and punishment to gain almost absolute control over an individual's behavior. It should then be possible to achieve a very rapid and highly effective type of positive brainwashing that would allow us to make dramatic changes in a person's behavior and personality. Now, when we talked before about that kind of ray and the telepathic and electronically augmented communication, the kind of rays that are fed from the memories of computers which store massive data about humans, human language and dialects, and we said that the people will be reached from within, making each person to believe that his own God is speaking directly from within his or her own soul, we refer to that kind of technology and that kind of thinking that same psychologist was espousing, that is. We should be trained from birth that we should all do what society wants us to do rather than what we want to do for ourselves. That's because they have the technology to do it, no one should now be allowed to have their own individual personality. This statement and these ideas are important because it is the basic teaching of the United Nations that no one owns his or her own personality. And that same psychologist claims that no one has any say so about the kind of personality they acquire and there is no reason to believe you have the right to refuse to acquire a new personality if your old personality is considered antisocial. What is important in this declaration is that the new world order will be set up over the current system, meaning the old way of thinking and behavior and religion will be considered the old and incorrect way of thinking and that they can change it at one of the eradication camps of the United Nations to make sure that anyone with this antisocial behavior will be disposed of quickly so that other modified individuals will be able to fulfill the needs and agendas of the new world order without being distracted by the truth. Could this be the greatest mind control project ever? The NASA Blue Beam Project is the prime directive for the new world order's absolute control over the populations of the entire Earth. I would suggest you investigate this information carefully before dismissing it as fanatic lunacy. If we go further in the different reports we have presented, we find that the mind control operations and technology include a transmitter that broadcasts at the same frequency as the human nervous system, which transmitter is manufactured by the Laurel Electro-Optical System in Pasadena, California. Laurel, a major defense contractor, has previously conducted research on directed energy weapons for Lt. General. Leonard Perez of the U.S. Air Force who was searching for a weapon that could implant messages into the minds of the enemy while urging his own troops onto superhuman deeds of valor. The device employs electromagnetic radiation of gigahertz frequencies, microwaves, pulsed at extremely low frequencies, ELF. It is used to torture people both physically and mentally from a distance. Weapons of this type are thought to have been used against a British woman protesting the presence of American cruise missiles at Greenham Common Air Base during the 1970s. This weapon can be used to induce total sensory deprivation by broadcasting signals into the auditory nerve at such high power that it blocks the ability of the individual to hear themselves think. The process employed by such ELF technology are described in various U.S. Defense Department publications, including one entitled, the Electromagnetic Spectrum and Low-Intensity Conflict, by Captain Paul E. Tyler, Medical Commandant, U.S. Navy, 
which is included in a collection entitled, Low Intensity Conflict and Modern Technology Edict, by L.T. Colonel David G. Dean, USAF. The paper was delivered in 1984 and the collection published 1986 by Air University Press, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Another pulse microwave device can deliver audible signals directly to an individual while remaining undetectable to anyone else. The technology is very simple and can be built by using an ordinary police radar gun. The microwave beam generated by the device is modulated at audio frequencies and can broadcast messages directly into the brain. Now here we come to the NASA Blue Beam Project. The broadcasting of subliminal two-way communication and images from the depths of space correspond directly to that kind of technology. Now you can understand why, Gwen, towers are being built so rapidly and many 5G transmitters are being installed all over the globe electromagnetic wave, frequency manipulation. In his book, The Body Electric, Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Robert O. Becker describes a series of experiments conducted in the early 1960s by Alan Furry where this phenomena was demonstrated as well as later experiments conducted in 1973 at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research by Dr. Joseph C. Sharp who personally underwent tests in which he proved he could hear and understand messages delivered to him in an echo-free isolation chamber via a pulsed microwave audiogram which is an analog of the word sound vibration beamed into his brain. Becker then goes on to state, Such a device has obvious application for covert operations designed to drive a target crazy with unknown voices or deliver undetectable instructions to a programmed assassin. Now figure out when we hear that voice from the New World Messiah who would be speaking from space to all of the sane people of the earth who might give instructions to zealots and religious fanatics, we would see hysteria and social mayhem on a scale never witnessed before on this planet. No police forces in the world, even as a combined front, could deal with the disorder that will follow. A 1978 book entitled, Microwave Auditory Effect and Application, by James C. Lynn describes how audible voices can be broadcast directly into the brain. This technology could actually allow the blind to see and the deaf to hear. Instead, it has been turned into a weapon to enslave the world. Alan Furry also reports that he could speed up, slow down or stop the hearts of isolated frogs by synchronizing the pulsed rate of a microwave beam with the heart itself. According to Dr. Robert Becker, similar results have been obtained using live frogs, which shows that it is technically feasible to produce heart attacks with rays designed to penetrate the human chest. Note, both the author of this report and his colleague died of heart attacks, only days apart. I should mention also that Dr. Becker does not participate in such research. It has been demonstrated that focused ultra-high-frequency UHF electromagnetic energy beams can be used to induce considerable agitation and muscular activity or induce muscular weakness and lethargy. Microwaves can also be used to burn human skin and aid the effect of drugs, bacteria and poisons or affect the function of the entire brain. These effects were all revealed at length by the CIA on September 21, 1977 in testimony before the Subcommittee on Health and Scientific Research. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb who directed the MK Ultra program at that time was forced to discuss the scope of the CIA's research to find techniques of activation of the human organism by remote electronic means. So this is something that exists right now, that has been pursued to its highest degree, that can be used from space to reach any person, any place on the face of the Earth. If we go deeper in that process of mind control over the people we find that the equipment and technology has been used to influence politics in a much more direct fashion. Michael Dukakis, the Democrat candidate that was running against George Bush in the 1988 election was targeted with microwave technology in order to impede his public speaking performance once the public opinion polls showed he posed a serious threat to Bush's election prospects. He also claims that the equipment was used against Kitty Dukakis and drove her to the brink of suicide. In the Disneyland world of U.S. politics, a presidential candidate with problems such as these would obviously lose their race to the White House. In the December 1980 edition of the U.S. Army, Jour Army Journal, called the Military Review, a column by L.T. Colonel John B. Alexander, entitled, The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up, Spock, provides further insight into the technical capabilities at the disposal of the controller. He writes, several examples will demonstrate areas in which progress have been made. The transference of energy from one organism to another. The ability to heal or cause disease to be transmitted over a distance, thus inducing illness or death from no apparent cause. Telepathic behavior modification which includes the ability to induce hypnotic states up to a distance of 1,000 kilometers have been reported. 
the use of telepathic hypnosis also holds great potential. This capability could allow agents to be deeply planted with no conscious knowledge of their programming. In movie terms, the Manchurian candidate lives and does not even require a telephone call. Other mind-to-mind -mind induction techniques are being considered. If perfected this capability could allow the direct transference of thought via telepathy from one mind or group of minds to a select target audience. The unique factor is that the recipient will not be aware that thought has been implanted from an external source. He or she will believe the thoughts are original. This is exactly what we were talking about. The third step in the NASA Blue Beam project is called the Telepathic Electronic Two-Way Communication. LT. Colonel John Alexander's article continues. If it is possible to feed artificial thought into the multigenic field via satellite, the mind control of the entire planet is now possible. An individual's only resistance would be to constantly question the motivation behind their thoughts and not act upon thoughts which they consider to be outside their own ideological, religious and moral boundaries. Once again, it is wise to consider how television, advertising, modern education and various types of social pressure are used to manipulate those boundaries. It has been reported by LT. Colonel Alexander who said, in the summary of his military review article, the information on those kinds of technologies presented here would be considered by some to be ridiculous since it does not conform to their view of reality. But some people still believe the world is flat. Now, this means a lot, because if people do not believe this kind of technology is possible, or that it is science fiction, those people put themselves in great jeopardy, because on the night when those thousand stars will shine from space, during the night when the new messiah will be presented to the world, they will not be prepared and will have no time to prepare to save themselves against that kind of technology. They don't believe and they won't take time to prepare. This is exactly what happens to people who are convinced by Satan, negative forces into believing that he doesn't exist, so they have no defense against him. Jaw. Universal Supernatural Manifestations via Electronics. The fourth step concerns the universal supernatural manifestation with electronic means. It contains three different orientations. One is to make mankind believe that an alien, off-world, invasion is about to occur at every major city on Earth in order to provoke each major nation to use its nuclear weapons in order to strike back. This way, the United Nations Court will require that all those nations which launched nuclear weapons to disarm when the invasion is shown to have been false. And how will the United Nations know that the invasion was false? They will have staged it, of course. The second is to make the Christians believe that the rapture is going to occur with the supposed divine intervention of an alien, off-world, civilization coming to rescue earthlings from a savage and merciless demon. Its goal will be to dispose of all significant opposition to the implementation of the New World Order in one major stroke. Actually, within hours of the beginning of the Sky Show, the third orientation in the fourth step is a mixture of electronic and supernatural forces. The Waves used at that time will allow supernatural forces to travel through optical fibers, coaxial cables, TV, electrical and phone lines in order to penetrate to everyone at once through major appliances. Embedded ships will already be in place. The goal of this deals with global satanic ghosts projected all around the world in order to push all populations to the edge of hysteria and madness. To drown them into a wave of suicide, murder and permanent psychological disorders. After the night of the thousand stars, worldwide populations will be ready for the new messiah to re-establish order and peace at any cost, even at the cost of abdication of freedom. This means that they can start fresh, year, zero, and enforce their one world religion, one world government after the destruction that takes place during the shift. Phasing out cash and independence. The techniques used in the fourth step is exactly the same used in the past in the USSR to force the people to accept communism. The same technique will be used by the United Nations to implement the New World Religion and the New World Order. A lot of people ask when this is going to happen and how they will accomplish the visions of the Night of a Thousand Stars, and the events that will point to the days when it will begin. According to the many reports and observations over the years, we believe it will begin with some kind of worldwide economic disaster. Not a complete crash, but enough to allow them to introduce some kind of in-between currency before they introduce their electronic cash to replace all paper or plastic money. The in-between currency will be used to force anyone with savings to spend or turn in their cash because they understand that people who have money and are not dependent upon them might be the very ones who will mount an insurrection against them. If everyone is broke, no one can fund a war of any kind. Paper currency will cease to exist. This is one of the first signs. But to implement the worldwide electronic money system, Everyone in the world who might have money in the future, 
we'll have to have a way to transfer money electronically. Everyone has to be 100% dependent upon the council for their existence. To prevent any kind of independence, the New World Order has already implanted microchips in wild animals, birds, fish and humans. The human chips they're trying to make, trendy. Very clever. Why? They want to make certain that the people who will not accept the New World Order will not be able to hunt or fish anywhere in the world. If they try, they will be tracked and traced by satellites, then hunted down and imprisoned or killed. The New World Order is already changing the laws of all nations to make everyone dependent upon a single food and vitamin supply. They are changing laws about religion and psychiatric disorders in order to identify anyone who is potentially threatening to the NWO. That's why they try to silence the truther movement. Those who are found defective will be sent to eradication camps, FEMA camps. Those who are not killed outright will be used as slave labor or used in medical experiments. The goal of a dictatorship is to control everyone, everywhere on the planet, ruthlessly and without exception. That's why the new technology being introduced everywhere is a technology for the control of the people. The technology of the 1940s and 1950s was used to help the people have an easier and more productive life. The new technology is designed and built to track down and control people everywhere. This technology is being manufactured for a specific purpose and to refuse to see and recognize that purpose, which is to enslave the entire populations of the world after the pole shift is to deny the emergence of the Antichrist agenda, the establishment of the New World Order religion and government. CERN, HARP, Gwen etc. play a vital role in this goal refer to my post to understand more about how they use CERN and what for. HTTPS colon slash slash www If you cannot see, if you cannot learn, if you cannot understand, then you and your family and friends will fall victims of the coming events. No one is safe in a totalitarian police state. Here's a couple of links to Blue Beam Associated Technologies. H The elite have to show you what's coming in some form, it's a universal law of truth, so they make films to subliminally show you what's coming and what to expect. Films like, The Day After Tomorrow, 2012, San Andreas, Deep Impact etc. show you the effects of the geological pole shift. You will see in those films, martial law, is implemented and the nations get little warnings. Pandemonium created. Films like, Independence Day, Arrival, Signs, Battle, Los Angeles etc. are all designed to mentally prepare you for the fake alien invasion which will be used through Project Bluebeam. Again, in each film, there is hardly any warning and martial law is in effect. Films like Hunger Games, Divergent, Total Recall etc. are showing you the after time, post shift. You will see in these films that there is total control in the smaller cities that remain, put into factions, made to work for the elite whilst their OS total militarization of the streets. Even robotic soldiers, which already exist ready for the shift. The people that are living in the wild are classed as the outcasts, hunted down, drafted in if caught. Always a fight between good and evil. Dot the ones that don't follow the FEMA, UN instructions will be fighting for survival but also free. You'll also notice in those films that the good people or the outcasts always eventually win and break the shackles of the slavery to bring peace on earth. This will occur in time. There will be battles, but we will win. It will be a hard transition for all people on Earth but it's your own free will, how you survive and which way you go. What can we expect to happen as the pole shift occurs? Oceans will slosh causing worldwide coastal 500 feet plus tidal surges with it reaching 1,200 to 1,500 feet above sea level due to tidal bore. They have been building sea defense systems since I was a child worldwide because they knew these days was coming. Build up, close to and in the hour of the shift. The wind will exceed 200 miles per hour, there will be fast-moving cyclones, hurricanes. There will be sudden plasma storms, ice storms, day after tomorrow, 2012, seen them films? If you have then that's the best depiction of a pole shift. Not only that, we will be getting meteorites raining down on Earth as we will be directly in the debris field of the system as it passes from under the ecliptic. Crustal displacement, this means huge geological changes, some land will rise up, some land will go underwater. Craton plates are the strongest foundations to be on but even those contain ancient faults, fracture points so be aware of the geology.
In the the hour of the pole shift, you need to be underground, in a cave at least, far away from the coastlines and as high as possible. High elevations. No place is truly safe but there is safer places to be. We are all in the same boat, all will go through the same events. I'm not talking from a secret underground bunker up in the mountains here, I'm right by the coast not even 100 feet above sea level so trust me this is for all our benefit. There are many train tunnels that are burrowed out through large hillsides, mountains. These are incredible pre-built safe havens for the shift and can fit lots of people in so bear them in mind if you feel you're struggling to find a safe location. Always be sure to check the elevation of your safe location though. There are also many unused, desolate nuclear bunkers scattered around which may have the right elevation so scouting areas is a good idea. If you have a storm shelter in your garden and have a good elevation then this will suffice in the hour of the shift. You can even make a shelter. You can dig out a small trench, cover with metal sheeting and then cover with earth, pat down till completely solid, saturate with water, pat down again to completely solidify the earth, this will be a good survival bunker. Make sure to leave an entrance at both ends, this will give you two exits if one gets blocked. Road bridges. There is also many road bridges that can give you shelter from the elements if stuck out on the road, walking. They are strong structures, they will suffice in the event of an emergency situation. Elevation is still key though. Coal mines, caves, large storm water drains all these options will give anyone a better chance than being in a house. Even the basement on a house will be better than being above ground but it is a risky move due to rev structural damage the building will incur. You don't want to be trapped down there. Have exits. Worst places and best places to be during, near the pole shift. Remember, some land will rise, some land will subside. Imagine being in the middle of the Atlantic when the Atlantic Ridge separates. Boats will not be able to deal with that kind of movement. Remember, new faults will occur along the seabeds and underwater volcanoes will be extremely violent. Worst places to be middle of the sea in any kind of boat. By coastal areas. Near fault lines. Near volcanoes. Near rivers. Near dams. Near nuclear power plants. Near cities. Near towns. Fault lines will be making some major adjustments. Lots of volcanoes will be sporadically spurting magma. Rivers will rise rapidly as the shift occurs due to the tidal surges. As the surge reaches the narrower landmass of riverbeds, the waters will push very high, very quickly. These are most definitely the areas you need to be 1,200 feet above sea level, depending on your distance away from the coastline. Dams will fail, water deluges will occur as water pressure increases. We have seen over the past two years how many dams have failed and caused major flooding in the towns near. Images the surges that occur in the shift. Make short work of dams. Nuclear power plants will be shut down before the shift. The elite needs the world to be ecologically viable after the shift. Nuclear waster being all over the globe will just kill the entire planet and not be human friendly for hundreds of years. They will not allow that to happen, for their sake, not ours. However, precautionary measures should be taken to just stay away from them in general. Cities and towns, as stated, will be rife with violence, riots, total pandemonium. People will be looting food and killing to protect their families. Stay away from the towns, cities. After all is settled, the survivors will be rounded up. Your safe location needs to be secluded, a hideout, place not many know about. It's important to try and connect with fellow truthers in your area. Safety in numbers. But be sure to have regular meets so you get to know your fellow survivalists on face value, build character references, build trust. Your safe location doesn't have to be on your doorstep. My safe location is a four-hour drive so be prepared to make a journey. Have a bug out bag, Bob, in place ready to leave at any moment. And it's important to note there may not be power, EMPs also wipe out the use of electronic vehicles and fry all the electronic components in any car so be prepared to walk to your safe location, even if it takes 5 days. Be prepared. For anything. Pack your big put bag wisely. These are the must-haves, the things that you will need bring with you, not just for you but for the whole survival group, of you have one. You will be farming your own foods, purifying your own water and creating your own energy so these things are a must-have for everyone to have that want to survive and thrive together as a whole to build a better community. Seeds fruit, herb and vegetable seeds will play a huge role in keeping our community fed and a thriving farmland is a thriving community. Must be organic. Use the seeds that grow within to regrow your vegetation. Water get some pallets of bottled water to the safe locations for the first period of the transition but hopefully, there will be water sources there that you can distill daily for our community's uses, however, make sure you have a couple of bottles of water in your bag, 
Also it's a must to have water purification tablets. They are very cheap to buy and don't take up any room at all so please invest in them if you haven't already. Also, take as much water in your vehicles as possible when the time comes. Food you will all need to ideally have 3 months worth of food rations for each person you bring to the safe location, it sounds a lot but be sensible with the types of food you pack. Ideally you want dried vegetables, berries, fruit, cereal bars, energy bars, glucose tablets, multivitamins, rice that kind of stuff will be much easier to keep and is easy to buy in bulk. Also, protein powder contains an abundance of nutrition and again is easy to stock up. This is all needed for when we are waiting for our food to grow etc and we will also be hunting, fishing daily. It would be wise to bury supplies near your safe location in secret. Alternative power you will be creating your own power but the initial first couple of weeks will be where you'll have to build these systems so please try to take batteries, preferably rechargeable ones. Wind up torch, lanterns, radios is good to have especially the ones with USB built in. Solar panel energy will be ideal for when the sun is out and there are a variety of portable panel systems that are available. Learn to make your own energy in a survival situation by searching the web for how to videos. There is a variety of valuable instructions available at your fingertips. Temporary shelter now this is totally your choice on what sort of shelter you want to be in for the first part of the transition, we would all love a swanky caravan ideally but it just won't be the case. I personally think the pop-up tents are essential for everyone's list as they self-erect themselves, ideal for when we are on foot and the roads are blocked. Of course if you can access the safe location by vehicle then you could pack any tent but be prepared for all situations. This is for pre-shift and post-shift, you'll need to be in an underground, strong structure for the shift transition. Ham radio handset This is a must-have for everyone in the group, probably one of the most essential parts of your survival equipment, this will be your form of contact with the whole group as you near the safe locations so that you can find your fellow people. Ideally you want one handset per person you bring to the safe locations but one handset per each group will still be better than none. You should set up your own call sign when you have a handset and have a set channel for your community to use. Basic survival equipment We have done a few videos for people to get a better idea of what we personally have in our bags but it's your own preference really. Essentially you need to have fire lighting equipment, compass, maps, survival knife, mini fishing kit, waterproof clothing, basic food rations, water purification tablets. Note there are many different types. You should get the ones that purify 1 liter to each tablet and get the ones that purify 25 to 30 liters per tablet, survival books, emergency tent, torch, sleeping bag, body wash, camping saucepans, water storage and your ham radio handset. Again, if you can get there by car before SHTF then take as much stuff as you can, above is just basic must-haves. Alternative routes It is up to every individual to get to know every other route possible to get to the safe location, it's essential to know these routes, I can't stress this enough because we all know the roads will be blocked at some stage and when martial law is announced the military will be swiftly ordered to close roads so familiarize yourself with walking, cycling, cross country, driving routes and also if you don't know how to read a compass, map then please take 5 minute to watch a video on how to because it's very simple and easy to learn. What evidence do we have that this has occurred before? The last pole shift is why there are cities underwater and why big boats, whale bones were found in mountains. The plasma discharges in the atmosphere is what the ancient used to draw on walls, the dragon in Chinese prophecy is the plasma reactions that go from planet to planet as they draw close. The tribulation in the Bible is the crossing. Al the destruction in Revelation, the quakes, the flood. Blue and red Kachina in the Hopi prophecies are Nemesis and Nibiru. The destroyer is what they called it in Hebrew. The winged sun symbol is what they used in ancient Egypt due to its looking like it has wings from the red iron oxide particles spewing out of the upper atmosphere as it makes its orbit around Nemesis and drew close. The ancient Sumerians called planet of the crossing Nibiru. Ancient Indians called it the winged serpent. Every religion has the same exact story just interpreted in different ways. They had the same paintings, carvings all over the world without being able to contact each other and all from totally different eras. All talk of planetary bodies, heavenly beings, destruction, floods, dot all that comes with a pole shift. Where did those civilizations go? Why is most of our history buried underground? Because the land and sea swallows most of the history when a pole shift occurs. The Bible is almost like a guidebook of the pole shift, telling you what they experienced and warning you of what's to come. All the fish are dying by the thousands, birds are dying through magnetic field line disruptions, Land animals are being killed in the thousands before plasma storms. Because of this the land dries up, and all who live in it waste away. The beasts of the field, 
the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea are swept away. Hosea chapter 4 verse 3. The Sumerian tablets, the Incas, Mayans, Hopi and pretty much all over books of knowledge like the Colburn Bible, Lost Book of Enki, Book of Enoch all categorically points to the crossing and all the effects leading up to it. Research it, it's all there for you to find, nothing is hidden, it's your free will to look and pay attention, no one can make that decision for you, just you. They rely on the ignorance, arrogance of people to lead people away from the truth. The elite make dates up too, like the 2000 end of the world scenario or the 2012 Mayan end of calendar world destruction. That's dates are designed to come and go with absolutely no change in he world on those dates so that lots of people around the world adopt this. What a load of rubbish, attitude and then completely ignore any other conspiracy theory. Again, very clever. But what can we say did happen 3600 plus years ago that was significant and correlated with the pole shift? If we look at the above top secret files, we can see that quite a lot occurred in correlates. Science Daily, Jan. 20, 2009. First came the earthquakes, then the torrential rains. But the relentless march of sand across once fertile fields and bays, a process set in motion by the quakes and flooding, is probably what did in America's earliest civilization. So concludes a group of anthropologists in a new assessment of the demise of the coastal Peruvian people who built the earliest, largest structures in North or South America before disappearing in the space of a few generations more than 3,600 years ago. This maritime farming community had been successful for over 2,000 years, they had no incentive to change, and then all of a sudden, boom, said Mike Mosley, a distinguished professor of anthropology at the University of Florida. They just got the props knocked out from under them. Washington, AP, the rains stopped coming, the temperature rose and the great grasslands of North Africa turned to desert a few thousand years ago changes that may have helped spur development of civilization in the Nile Valley. The change to today's arid climate was not gradual, but occurred in two episodes the first 6,700 to 5,500 years ago and the second 4,000 to 3,600 years ago, according to a paper published Thursday by the journal Geophysical Research Letters. The latter was very severe, ruining ancient civilizations and socioeconomic systems, the researchers wrote. A team of researchers headed by Martin Clausen of Germany's Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research analyzed computer models of climate over the past several thousand years. They concluded that the change to today's desert climate in the Sahara was triggered by changes in the Earth's orbit and the tilt of Earth's axis. The extinction of the woolly mammoth some 3,600 years ago was driven by the disappearance of its icy habitat combined with the emergence of human hunters, scientists have confirmed. The relative importance of climate and hunting for the mammoth's fate has long been debated but rarely assessed quantitatively. World's second largest volcano eruption 1600 BC. Scientists have learned the second largest volcanic eruption in human history. The Bronze Age eruption was much larger than thought. Researchers from the University of Rhode Island in the Hellenic Center for Marine Research in Athens, Greece, using techniques similar to those employed by oil companies to search for offshore deposits, earlier this year found deposits of volcanic pumice and ash up to 260 feet thick extending more than 15 miles in all directions from the Greek island of Santorini. These deposits have changed our thinking about the total volume of erupted material from the Minoan eruption, said Uri volcanologist Harold R. Sigurdsson. Irish tree rings in an event in 1628 BC. In prehistoric times, oaks growing on the surface of Irish raised bogs were recording rare extreme events. These extreme events are characterized by the simultaneous occurrence of the narrowest rings in the lifetime of trees throughout a wide geographical spread of sites. Significantly the dates of these extreme, narrowest ring, events coincide with the estimated dates for major volcanic eruptions as recorded in the Greenland ice cap. One of these events occurs in the decade of the 1620s BC and coincides very precisely with a previously suggested volcanic event at 1626 BC, now 1627 BC, put forward by Lamarckie. One has led to the inevitable conclusion that some major hemispheric event took place in the decade of the 1620s BC, and a strong circumstantial case can be constructed that the event was volcanic in origin. Since the dating is based on precisely dated tree rings no further refinement of the date of the event, probably 1628 BC, is required. Ice core samples over 30,000 years show, great geologic stress every 3,600 years. Michel R. Legrand and Robert J. 
Delmas of Laboratoire de Glaciologie et Geophysique de l'Environnement published an article, Soluble Impurities in Four Antarctic Ice Cores Over the Last 30,000 Years, in Annals of Glaciology, 10, 1988, pp 116-120. to They graphed the oxygen-18 variations and the ionic components Na equals NH, sub-4, and Ca, sub-2, and H and Cl and No, sub-3, and So, sub-4. The time scale for each ionic component level as well as the O, sub-18, levels stretches back 30,000 years. The graph shows correlations to spikes at 5200 BC, 8800 BC, 12400 BC, circa 16000 BC, circa 19600 BC. All of these were times of great geologic stress. When looking at the data and taking into account the acknowledged dating inaccuracies, some of the ranges of dates can go 100 years in either direction of the spike, even though the spiking is regular and rhythmic, for the more recent dates, and 3 to 600 years variance for the older dates, especially when one considers that these are broad analyses and nobody was really looking for anything specific, they just said, wow. Look at that wavy line. We find that the southern ice cores do not register the same as the northern ones. The 1628 BC event that really slammed the tree rings shows almost no registration in the Antarctic cores in terms of volcanic activity. But the northern cores show the activity beginning 1644 BC. The evidence for the 5200 BC event is strong in the Dome Sea core. The 8800 BC event is well marked, in fact, seems to be the strongest of them all. The flood of Noah, no doubt. The oxygen-18 isotope variation is noticeable. The rise in sea salt, elevated levels of C1 and C1, Na. There is an extreme spike in SO, sub-4, and H readings suggesting widespread volcanic activity. Great earth changes were happening at that time, and they registered in the climate, the oceans, and were preserved. There is an extreme spike in SO, sub-4, and H readings suggesting widespread volcanic activity. Great earth changes were happening at that time, and they registered in the climate, the oceans, and were preserved in ice. The 12,400 BC event is extremely pronounced in the cores. The graphs show a quick, vast change including the end of the Wisconsin Ice Age, e.e. evidence of nuclear activity in Paleo-Indian times. All this information is out there to be researched. All of our ancestors had to endure the pole shift. But we're still here to tell the tale. Stay vigilant. 11 likes. Jillian F. Dennis. 4Y. That certainly was a very long read. Thank you for all the information, Mark Ilkin. Mark Ilkin Hidden Knowledge, Unraveling the Pole Shift. 4Y. Welcome Red Heart. Rami Dawad. 4Y. Sun Simulator Maybe it draws attention more, people will say hey another sun is there. I'm trying to imagine how Sun Simulator will look like in low orbit, will be look like star? Fictitious. 4Y. I'm curious how you draw the conclusions about what the governments will do, have planned. Research indicates technology is there to implement such things, but how are we sure of their motives? 1. Stephen Warkup. 4Y. An excellent report and extremely sobering. Bulldozer. 2Y. Wow. I'm going out to buy 10 rolls of HD aluminum foil. Who knew the tin foilers had it right all along? It'll be crazy to live through. There is hope because God, the Creator and Messiah, in all his mystery is still in control regardless of what's happening. 1. Claire Searle. 2Y. Hi Mark, thanks for the updates. I've been getting my gear together ready to go when advised. Can you point me either direction of best ration suppliers and also regarding seeds? How long can you keep seeds before germination rates fall too low for them to be viable? Cheers. By becoming